Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to customize Simplicon pipelines. This makes it easier to work together. While I will showcase this in Maya, it is possible to do this both in 3ds Max and Unity with the exact same steps. The scenario we are going to follow is that we have a video game where we want to optimize all small props. These props are made by different artists on our team some of which are not fully comfortable with all Simplicon settings. While we normally recommend to put a fully automated pipeline in place, this is a good first step towards automation. The first step would be to experiment and find the correct settings for our small prop pipeline. Our assets are made out of quad, and we're thus going to use our new quad reducer for LOD1. In our engine, we expect to change this LOD when the object is rendered at 500 pixels, so we leave screen size as it is. Upon processing the asset, we can see that we are happy with the result. For LOD2, we're going to use our ordinary triangle reduction pipeline, as this works better for higher reduction. We are adding this as a cascaded pipeline to our quad pipeline. That means the results from our first LOD will be used as input to our second LOD. As target, we're going to use screen size, uh, and in our game, we're going to switch to it at 200 pixels. We process the mesh and see that we are happy with LOD2. We're also going to add one last step to our pipeline for LOD3. And we are going to switch to this LOD at screen size 50. So we put in screen size 50. Run the pipeline and you can see that it gives good result. We are now satisfied with this pipeline and are going to save it to disk so we can use it for other props and later share it. To save it to disk, click the gear, then go to save pipeline. Here we can also create subfolders to organize our different pipelines. Here is another small prop we want to optimize. If we click add LOD component, we can see the pipeline that we just saved. If we click on it, that loads up our entire prop pipeline and we can use it to process our asset. The result looks good. The pipeline has still a lot of complexity exposed, and if we would share this with someone that is not very comfortable with Simplicon, they might start poking around on settings that they should not touch. We're now going to hide away all of the settings that we don't expect people to use. So, click the gear icon and then choose Edit Pipeline. We get a checkbox for each property. We can uncheck it to hide the settings. After that, we can save our pipeline. Here we have loaded up yet another prop, and we can load our pipeline from the Add Load Component menu. As you can see, we have significantly less settings exposed. Let's process our asset. The result looks good. While we have hidden away some of the settings that the user should not touch, it is still possible to set strange values for the exposed settings, and that could potentially cause some issues. Let's look into how to address that. We're going to open up the pipeline file in a text editor. Here we can search for the values that we have exposed out to the users. In our case, we exposed reduction target on screen size for our quad pipeline. Here we can change the max value and min value to the maximum and minimum allowed value, in our case screen size. Tick frequency values determines how much it should change if you click on the slider. We're going to set a good max and minimum screen size and a tick value that makes sense. We're then going to do that for all of the settings we have exposed out. 
we then save our pipeline. Lastly, we load our final asset and add our pipeline. Let's just try to optimize it as it is. The asset is a little bit cheeky and contains a lot of sliver triangles. This makes we want to increase the reduction specifically for lot 2. We're going to change the screen size and geometry importance of lot 2's pipeline and we can only work within the values that we have specified before. We process the asset and can see that lot 2 now has a more appropriate amount of triangles. Creating custom pipelines in this way allow a few experts in your team to empower the rest of the team by sharing good presets for different kinds of assets. Defining pipelines for each asset category in your game is also a good first step towards automation, as the next natural step would be to ask yourself how can we run this automatically, and that is through scripting. But we're going to look at that some other day. I hope you have learned something new today. If you want to learn more things about game optimization with Simplegon, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening.